On Star Trek, Section 31 were a secret intelligence agency within Starfleet Intelligence, and even the majority of Starfleet officers didn't know about them. Section 31 were introduced in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and the character of Julian Bashir had several run-ins with them. They were a decentralised agency with no primary base of operations. In the 24th century, they were declassified, kind of like the NSA in America, the National Surveillance Agency. It was founded in 1952, but not officially revealed to the public until 1975. But Section 31 had existed for a very long time indeed. In fact, they were a thing as far back as the 22nd century because we saw them on Enterprise in its fourth season. But regardless, the agency was so secretive that they weren't even the stuff of conspiracy, myth, or urban legend. They were completely unheard of by most people. Captain Sisko had zero knowledge of them. But then, the bad robot Kelvin timeline movies came out, and in the second film, Into Darkness, Section 31 were mentioned like they were no big deal. Admiral Marcus name-drops them as casually as someone today would discuss the CIA or the FBI or indeed the NSA. And then, in Star Trek Discovery, they were a regular presence, exposing themselves openly to the crew of that ship. They even had a stupid black comm badge that was kind of like an ID card. <laughs> Heck, they even had their own ships. They even had their own headquarters. The mystery, the secrecy, the intrigue, it was all gone. Section 31 had been ruined, just like the overuse of the Borg on Star Trek Voyager. Anyway, before we go very much further with this particular topic in today's video, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that like button, share this video, it's very much appreciated. Now, what I will say is, Section 31 on Star Trek Discovery were basically reduced to being little more than cliched, moustache-twirling arch-villains, as opposed to being the intelligent, sinister and enigmatic force we saw on Enterprise and especially on Deep Space Nine. But given the formulaic nature of the writing on Discovery, I'm not surprised that Alex Kurtzman and his team decided to latch on to Section 31 as antagonists. To me, it feels like they failed to fully understand what the organization was, and just presumed they were some kind of generic spy agency, like the kind we'd see in lots of other movies and TV shows like the IMF from Mission Impossible, for example. As a result, the writing of Section 31 and its characters became predictable. As you're probably aware, there was a plan to produce a Section 31 TV series. What a terrible idea. No one asked for that one. It was bad enough that the first two seasons of Star Trek Picard weren't based on a Federation starship. Fan expectations have been thoroughly subverted enough in Star Trek projects recently. A Section 31-centric story just doesn't really feel like Star Trek to me. It feels like yet another secret agent spy story, but with a future sci-fi setting. It's yet another step away from the basic premise of Star Trek, which is supposed to be about a hopeful and optimistic future for mankind and, of course, space exploration. Of course, Section 31 is now to be turned into a motion picture. This article is from ScreenRant.com. 14 Biggest Star Trek Updates, Section 31, Starfleet Academy, Strange New Worlds, and more. I'm going to focus on the Section 31 details in this particular article. There's been a new image released also. Here it is. Now, scrolling down to Section 12, Michelle Yeoh calls Section 31 Mission Impossible in Space. Star Trek's spy movie is more Tom Cruise than John le Carré. Yeah, see, this is my problem. It looks to be yet another format-breaker Star Trek-related series, as opposed to being a traditional, conventional Star Trek series. Given that Section 31 is an organization renowned for unethical behavior, I just foresee more edgy, dark Star Trek in this movie, which has been a regrettable staple of New Trek since Discovery. This next article is from comicbook.com. Star Trek Section 31 confirmed to feature major Next Generation character. A young version of Star Trek The Next Generation's Rachel Garrett will appear in Section 31. And there's a quote from the writer of the film, Craig Sweeney. He says, famously, there's a spot for everybody in Roddenberry's utopia. 
So I was like, well, who would be the people who don't quite fit in, Sweeney said. I didn't want to make the John Le Carré version, where you're in the headquarters and it's backbiting and shades of grey. I wanted to do the people who were on the edges, out in the field. These are not people who necessarily work together the way you would see on a Star Trek bridge. So it sounds to me like this Section 31 movie will once again be another ragtag ensemble of colourful characters, kind of like the crew of the La Serena in Star Trek Picard's first two seasons. Can we expect more insubordinate characters who simply don't embody the values of Starfleet at all? We've had plenty of that from New Trek recently. Nothing about this Section 31 film speaks Star Trek to me. The very concept is about as far removed from the Star Trek formula as you can get. Yes, Section 31 is an organization from Star Trek lore, but that doesn't mean it should be a centerpiece of a story. Section 31 was not something that was supposed to stick around. Its story has been told and done far better on DS9, in my opinion. And we even got closure. But New Trek just keeps bringing them back. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.